Hey there, this is Justin from CartoonSmart.com, and I'm going to demo this new Angry Ninja starter kit. And let's just start off with uh, level one here, and I'll uh, sling these uh, two ninjas toward the target stack. And look at that, I very easily <laughs> killed the uh, the enemy on the stage there. And of course, uh, I got a little bit of a bonus because there's one extra ninja standing. And then here on level two, you've got uh, more in ninjas to sling forward. And the stack becomes a little bit harder this time. Uh, you can uh, set up any number of different options for um, how your stack objects collide with each other, or if they do damage to the enemy, if they don't do damage, if they're movable or not or if um, the enemy requires damaging more than once. You can see actually um, we kind of progress through a series of images where he's getting more bandages as he gets uh, more damaged um, from you know either the ninja, the ninja or the object. And then eventually, you know, of course, you'll kill him and then you'll progress to the next level, maybe with a bonus. And um, we also track high scores over here, and you've also got a game menu. So you can uh, choose from going to different sections of levels. Uh, right now in the starter kit, each um, section just has one level to it. So if I were to jump to level four or section four, it's just going to take me directly to level four. But what you can set up in um, the template is how many uh, levels are in a section. So if you had uh, three levels, in a section, that means that jumping to here would take you to level one, this would take you to level four, seven, ten, and so on like that. And what you would need to do is pass all the levels in that section for it to be unlocked. And as you can see in my simulator here, I haven't unlocked all the, the boards. And of course you've got um, options to turn on sound effects, voice effects, or ambient effects. What ambient, what ambient effects are, in my mind, are any sort of background um, music or uh, just a looping sound file. In, in my case, I included in uh, two sound files of uh, insects or, or birds chirping in the background. And then voice effects. I, I recorded some like kind of grunting when when the ninja gets slung across. And um, you know, I think that's a. I think it's kind of good to separate voice effects from um, your regular sound effects. Uh, just because, you know, let's face it, not all of us are, have access to a great recording studio or, or uh, talented uh, voice artists. So, you know, if you record something on your own with like your, your brother or sister, your, your parents, whoever it is, uh, they're maybe not that great. So why don't you give people the option to just mute all those. And I'll show you guys, obviously, in the uh, starter kit videos how to, uh, how to uh, set all that up with, uh, you know, including in kind of like groups of sounds, whereas uh, where... If I were to play a voice, it's going to play a random assortment of the grunt noises. So the same grunt doesn't always play with um, the same ninja is what I'm getting at. And the same thing is true for any sort of crash effects or uh, collision with uh, with the stack. You can A lot of times you can just throw in just a lot of random noises. Actually, you can hear it now, maybe. And... Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of some other things to tell you guys about. Uh, this stage is set up a little bit differently for the iPhones and the iPods, iPod Touches, obviously, versus the iPad. So I'm going to go over here and just show you guys a screen capture I took uh, just with my webcam of me basically just holding the, uh, the iPad in front of it. So you can see that... Uh, it uh, plays just as good, of course. They all play at about 60 frames per second on all the devices. But um, the stage doesn't um, scale up or down on the iPad because we've got all this extra space over here. You really just don't uh, you don't need it to. Uh, whereas on the smaller devices, of course, you can see that as I pan toward the target, it, uh, it pans the whole level out like that. Okay, and of course, I'm just holding down and pressing to do that. Uh, and uh, you can choose between... in uh, embedded images that'll show up when you break something. So let's see if I can um, send somebody over here to break an object. Well, nothing actually broke that time. Maybe in the video I can pause it. Where I okay, here we go. So when you score, you'll see that you um, you can either choose between showing um, an image that indicates how many points you've gotten, or you can. Um, you just go with a, a standard font. Okay, so that's just an option. You just basically type in yes or no for <laughs> embedded images. Of course, if you're going to um, uh, use embedded images, you want to include those in the resources folder. And then another cool thing, you might be noticing that, um, here it is, when you collide with 
your stack objects, if they're going to break, you do have the option to include in this kind of standard explosion effect. Um, and there's another different one in here for the, um, the triangle shapes. So, and that's just a 10 frame uh, animation, and you can include that with, um, with any of the different, um, with any, any, any stack object can break using that effect, and that's probably the easiest way of uh, including an effect like that. What you can also do, though, I'm giving you another option if you really want to go to town, watch this wood shape when it breaks apart. You can see it's actually playing its own little animation inside of there. So each one of these stack effects can have a kind of standard, simple visual effect over top, explosion, whatever, and then it's kind of own internal animation where it starts kind of, you know, this one just kind of disintegrates away. And um, that takes a little bit more work because obviously um, you would do that on a per object basis instead of just throwing in the standard effect over top. So, you know, it's a, it's a good thing to, to have the option to do. I only did it in the template for one shape, just this, uh, this wood shape right here. And then the rest of them, I just kind of overlaid that standard uh, visual effect of it uh, breaking through there. And what else? You can, um, you can easily include uh, many different shapes. Right now, you're just seeing uh, squares and rectangles, squares, rectangles, and, um, and triangles. And if you were to click over here in the top right, of course, this is something that you're going to want to turn off in your final build. But in, 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 as I'm testing things through here, I have the option to press in the top right corner. And I see the actual vector outlines of these objects, and you can see the same thing for the ninjas too. As, as they're slung forward, they're really just circle shapes colliding with things. But um, the uh, obviously the, the vector shapes play an important part in uh, how your images seem to collide with other things. And uh, one of the things I, I kind of toyed around with when I was first building this template is how to make it really easy for you guys to include in lots of different shapes, not just um, squares and triangles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys um, some of the other shapes you can include in here. So I just uh, am restarting. Oh, that's interesting. I'm just restarting the uh, the simulator, and uh, we're gonna start this off at level zero this time. And uh, what level zero is is it's a uh, it's a board that you are not gonna play in your final version. You would just uh, set a variable to level equaling zero instead of one, and uh, this will give you a test bed of. Uh, all the different various shapes that you can uh, easily include in here. So let's move back to that. Let me just show you guys the vector outlines of these. And you can see that they line up um, nicely with the, uh, the actual visual aspect of the shape. And if you were then to cut over and look at the source images, these are actually the HD versions. Uh, this template does support uh, high res versions for uh, the iPhone 4, so you should include in this dash HD version, which is going to be double the size for any object you're going to include in here. Uh, so your circle shape without the dash HD dot PNG would be half the size. All right, so let's just scroll through here. Uh, again, it really doesn't matter about the size of the shape. It, what matters is the relative position of the um, the the points in here. So for this, for example, this hexagon shape, this is one quarter of the way, this first point right here is one quarter of, way, of the way across. This one is 75% of the way across. And of course, this point here is halfway down this side. And the same thing would be true uh, for this guy over here. All right, so that's a quarter of the way, 75% of the way, halfway down, and so on. And what you could always do is, um, and when you're building your shapes, you could just bring in these um, these resource files that I'm including and just scale them up or down use them as kind of a, a, a template in your Photoshop file you know make them half visible or something like that and just kind of draw over top of them and uh, so yeah you can see that um, you can have you know your parallel per, your parallelogram can look quite different um, depending on uh, how kind of wide it is or whatever so you do lots of different things and let's see, so there's a pentagon, these are just some of your square ones, a trapezoid, and again, this is a quarter of the way across, 75% of the way across, and then the, the points are just in the bottom, two corners, triangles, and wood shapes, and to elaborate a little bit more on the, um, on the look of your wood shapes breaking apart, you can... There you go. You can see the 
the actual frames. So here would be the first one, second one. My computer's being a little slow right now. There we go. This actually breaks apart. So that's a that's a really fancy effect. Um, I don't know if, how many of you are really going to want to go <laughs> that crazy breaking apart each one of these actual shapes. But then you do have that option too of just including in a standard explosion effect over top. So there's there's one of those, and then I also included in another one of the smoke just kind of puffing out from those guys. Okay. So one thing I'd like to do is show you guys the line of code that um, actually builds up a stack object. Okay, and I'll show you guys in a screen grab really quick. Uh, what that looks like and then I'll show it to you in the actual project itself but really what you're just doing is you're writing um, stack object okay and then you give it a name alright so then this name is also just going to be repeated down here when you actually add the child uh, to the stack and then you've got this whole chunk of code right here that just basically starts defining the properties for it okay this one you're always going to put in this world right here then your location okay and um, this one is at 200 and 300, all right? And you always add in this um, stack location X and stack location Y, so you never change that. And the reason you're adding those in is because uh, there's a slight difference. Well, no, there's not a slight difference. There's a big difference between where this, the entire stack is located based on the iPad versus the iPhone, okay? So uh, I've taken care of that by just including in a little extra amount for um, the X and the Y on those. So all you really have to worry about is just the initial positioning and this isn't going to change for you guys the numbers that you throw in here based on the iPhone or the iPad. You just figure it out once and you're done. And then the sprite file name, okay, so you can see that this is the, um, you just put in this at symbol and then in quotes Pentagon and you don't even have to worry about putting in the, the .png part. Uh, where did all my shapes go to? I guess I closed them out. But um, that would just find pentagon.png or it would automatically find pentagon-hd.png if you're on the high resolution iPhone. Okay, so again, you just put in a base file name here. Uh, for the most part with this template, you're just going to be throwing in base file names. Okay, and it's going to do the rest. And, and that's true actually with um, your characters as well. All right, so if you just put in like Red Ninja and then you've also included in frames for uh, Red Ninja Roll, uh, Red Ninja in air and things like that. It's going to just automatically find those files and we can talk about that too. But um, your next property is break sign ground and this is where you're setting up um, things that, uh, I mean really how your stack is going to work. Okay, so does this stack object, does it break on the ground? Okay, set it to no, obviously it doesn't. Does it break from the ninja? You can choose between yes or no. Does it have those animated break frames? All right, and those are those very specific ones I just showed you guys a moment ago, these ones right here. For the most part, my stack objects don't have those animated break frames. Does it get, does, does the stack object damage the enemy? Okay, so if this object were to fall on top of an enemy, enemy is, it gonna, is it gonna damage him? Is it gonna break him? All right, um, if the enemy is ready to break, then it's gonna break him. If not, then it's just gonna damage him a little bit. You can choose uh, your density in here. Okay, so that's, um, that's basically how uh, light or heavy the object is. All right, so when the, uh, the character collides with it, you know, does it, shoot it across the stage or does it just barely move it and then here's an important one this create how and you're gonna um, put in here these predefined definitions for use pentagon use hexagon uh, use shape of source image okay and obviously you're gonna use pentagon if it's the pentagon shape right here and for the most part you guys probably will just end up using squares so um, in that case, you'd use use the shape of source image, okay? And then angle change. You can uh, change the angle when you initially bring it in. So 90, 180, that's going to flip it upside down, 270, things like that. 45 doesn't matter. Uh, it's 0 to 360, those are your options there. Make immovable. And um, I do have some stack objects that uh, can't be moved at all, okay? So... For example, if I were to load up uh, level two here and go over this way, if I were to click in the top right, well, it's these two objects right here. What I should point out is that when you initially create the stack, every object is um, every object is is immovable at first until you make that first ninja get thrown across there. 
Uh, but then after that, it's um, it's only uh, certain objects that um, are dynamic. So this these two right here, see how they stayed green? Those two right there are um, immovable, all right? Um, so I, I had set that to yes for those two right down there at the bottom. And, you know, that adds a, a lot of challenge to your game. If certain objects uh, can never be moved around because then essentially, you know, you could set up some sort of like kind of alleyway that you've got to send uh, the ninja through uh, to, to collide with. And then uh, points, uh, 100. Okay, so um, choose a point value. Uh, 100, 500, 1,000, doesn't matter. 101, <laughs> you know, you can do whatever you want. Just be sure that if you're going to uh, include... Uh, if you've set the template to show images for the point value, just you have to have those source files in there for 100 points, 1,000 points, and so on like that. Simple score, visual effect, and all this is um, is just the effects that I was showing you guys over here. So if you put in here break effect smoke puffs, it's going to show these smoke puffs right here. I've also got another option that's break effect explosion. And that would show that explosion one, and you guys can include in there as many different effects as uh, you want to. All right, um, and I'll show you guys in the uh, the full video tutorial how that's done. So, all right, now I don't want to get too scary for you guys, but I'm going to show you guys the project, and uh, this is the stack class. All right, so when you want to create a new stack, right, you're gonna first off make a little bit of a change in here right now. Um, all this is just basically saying is if the current level equals zero, you're gonna call this method, which is down here a little bit. If it's if the current level is one, then you're gonna build level one. If the current level is two, you're gonna build level two, and then and so on like that. And right now in my case, in my template, I've only set up two levels. Okay, so you can see for level three, it's just gonna build the same level that was at level two. So when you're when you're setting up your levels like this, you're gonna go and copy paste down through here so you're going to change that to four you know you'll probably have that be four you'll probably have that be three and so on like that for as many levels as you have all right and the reason i haven't just gone and filled all these in is because i have no idea how um, many levels you guys are included are going to include in here so now let's jump down to building level one all right so here's the the, the method for that all right so everything from this right down to here is building level one and we basically got that same just chunk of code that I just showed you guys in the screen in the screen grab for um, <clears throat> for making a, a single object that's going to be on the stage there. And um, you just copy and paste that over and over again. You can see that this first object started at zero and um, was 65 up on the y-axis. And a lot of it really is just about positioning these shapes, you know, because if you're using kind of the same wood shape over and over again um, and building your stack up like that, there's not a lot of things that you need to change uh, each time other than the, uh, the actual uh, or the initial location of it. Okay, uh, let's go down and look at uh, level two for a second. Well, here's um, something to note as well is that if you ever want to make any sort of um, slight adjustment to where the entire stack is at um, based on the iPad or the iPhone, what you can do is um, offset them with these values right here. And of course, these are all set to no right now, so I'm not making any sort of adjustment to where the entire stack is at. Um, I, what I've got is a image to show you guys of level two as I was kind of building it up so let me go find that it's called grid example okay so let me let me jump over here to level two all right so here's level two right and here is the an image of when I was kind of figuring out where everything was going to be at okay and um, I was working in um, Flash when I when I did this, so this is just a screen grab of um, you know basically just the Flash stage. So here's the actual stage right here, this white part of it. And then what I did is uh, off to the side, I just um, kind of uh, put in the uh, the y axis values because what um, Cocos 2D does is it measures the the um, the starting point of the y axis from the bottom then up. So a y of zero is down here, whereas the a y value of 400 is obviously up here at the top. Um, and then x is just, you know, your standard left to right. Okay, so when I was figuring out the position of, uh, let's say, for this shape, right, 
I would look at the center point of it, okay, which is kind of easy to just eyeball. And so that looks like about 45 for the Y axis, right? So that's like over here. And then for the X, I was just using whatever the, you know, the, the property bar was showing me for the X value. That's an easy one to figure out. So um, then I would just slide over this way, uh, go and put my stack object in as that's that marble square. That's the image associated with that one. And then you can see that actually my X value was 40 and my Y value is 40. So then here's another one, marble square. That's that second one over here. And again, it is really easy, if, especially if your objects are lined up like this. You go, wait, the Y value is the same one as the last one. Okay, now all I have to figure out is the X value. And so on, like that. And um, yeah, here's those two shapes are immovable. Okay, so I set those guys to yes. Uh, I didn't have to put in any sort of points for them because they're not going to ever break. Uh, I don't put in breaks from Ninja. I don't put in breaks on ground and so on, uh, like that. And, you know, eventually you end up building up an entire stack. And, uh, you know, it might take 10 minutes or so, but really, when you think about it, 10 minutes to build up uh, a level, you know. Well, of course, then you, got, then you got to play it, see if it's actually fun and things like that, if it works well. And, um, yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's a, a, an easy way of setting things up for you guys. So hopefully, I made it as easy as possible. And then it, you can see that you get down here, you start to put in your enemies at the end as well. And they've got some slightly different properties. I don't want to, this is still just kind of a demo video, so I don't want to go over everything. But um, I have included with the starter kit two hours of videos that talk about just about everything you could think of. And as you can see, I, I can very easily talk about a lot. So what I should do is uh, shut down this demo and let you guys decide whether or not it's worth investing in. Just remember, uh, we've got two two licenses, a personal license and a developer license. So if you're going to be making the game for yourself, all right, the company that you own, the entity that you are, me doing business as me, if you're going to be making the game for you and submitting it to the Apple Store, that falls under the personal license. If you're going to be making this game or you're going to be using this game with a client of yours, you need to pay for the developer license, okay? Because essentially, you're kind of sharing the template with them, sharing the code with them. So just, just pony up for the de developer license. You can pass on the uh, the cost to them because if you're doing for hire work, obviously they're paying you for it. And uh, yeah, I think that's only fair. So remember, there are two licenses. And uh, of course, the template is available from cartoonsmart.com or other fine e-tailers.